2011, we made something happen in Yemen. Notice I said we made something happen. I didn't say something happened. We broke the chains of fear. We crossed the Rubicon, so, so to speak. Mr. Fear used to live within us. In our places of work, in our homes, in our streets. One fine morning, we decided that we have had enough. We took Mr. Fear, we bundled him, we packaged him, and we sent him to live with Mr. President of the Republic. <laughs> Ever since, everything the President and his government does, everything he says, every decision he makes, Mr. Fia reminds him to think very carefully about what we will say, how we will react, whether we will agree or not. We are no longer a nation of people subdued by Mr. Fia. Now, it is the President of the Republic and his government who are reminded every day by Mr. Fia who they work for and who is the real boss in Yemen. If there is one thing we accomplished and none other, crossing this Rubicon should be enough. There are two types of people. Those who see difficulties in everything they are about to start, and those who see ways around those difficulties. Those who ask, can I really do this? How can I really do this? And those who say, I can do this. Those who wait for something to happen, and those who make it happen. Today you have seen here, the people who spoke before me. Like in 2011, you have seen that we have shifted. We have become a nation of people who don't wait for things to happen. We have become a nation of people who make things happen. And that is the way forward. Nothing holds a person back than fear does, other than death, of course. In a way, death and fear are the same. That's why probably we have this saying, I was scared to death. There are different types of fear. There is the fear of the child, the kind of fear that makes the child afraid to go to the toilet alone at night. There's the fear of the coward, and I'm not going to try to explain that, it's too complex for me. And there's the fear of the wise person who understands the danger of doing something he doesn't understand or he doesn't know about. To face fear, one needs to be brave. Let me try to define brave for you. My wife is a very brave woman. That's why she married me. Or you can say she's stupid for the same reason. <laughs> what will that make my ex-wife, clever or coward? <laughs> the fear I want to talk about is the fear that prevents us from trying. The fear of failure. And in the process, we end up failing. We end up in the same ditch we try to avoid to start with. Because that fear prevents us from walking the walk to success. Now, I'm not suggesting one should uh, do something one doesn't understand. Remember the fear of the wise person, not the bravery of my wife. You, can, you have seen where that ended her in. <laughs> of course, failure is something we all want to avoid. But what is failure, really? And can one truly succeed without failure? How can one distinguish success from failure? How do you distinguish salt from sugar, dark from light, if you only know one? If success was easy, why isn't everybody successful? I will dare say, and this could be debatable, that anyone 
who has never experienced failure has never really succeeded. And if you came out of your mother's womb, passed in every exam in your life, succeeded in everything you touched, you haven't really succeeded, you were just lucky. Because you didn't really do it. The drive to succeed despite failures is what distinguishes the ambitious from the ordinary. Jackie Rowling, I think all of you know her, Jackie Rowling of uh, Harry Potter, an amazing woman. At the age of 28, she had a, bre uh, a, a failed marriage, a dependent child, and no job. She described herself as the biggest failure she knew. Yet that failure did not stop her from trying. In fact, in her own words, she considered the failure to be stripping away all the inessentials in her life. And she said, had I really succeeded in anything else, I might never have, been, uh, have found the determination to succeed in the one area that I truly belong. That one area where each one of us truly belongs. Each one of us has a talent, at least one talent. We might have more, but there is, each one of us has at least one talent. At least one thing we're really good at. What each one of us needs to do is find that thing, that talent, and find where we belong. Jackie Rowling described her previous failures as the liberating force for herself. And rock bottom became the foundation on which she rebuilt her life. What a great perspective. What a great way to look at things. That determination from the womb of failure is what made her keep on trying 12 times she went to publishers to publish Harry Potter. 12 times she was rejected. I mean, you go, you try five times, you try six times, you try nine times, you give up. 12 times she, she tried, and on the 13th time she succeeded. And published her book, which ended up publishing 400 million copies and becoming one of the biggest blockbuster movies in history. And as a bonus, turned her into a multimillionaire. <laughs> Failure is part of the process towards success. It's among the many building blocks or potholes of life that we need in order to understand and appreciate and strive for success. One day many years ago, I came home. I saw my eldest son was in a very depressed condition. I asked him, what's your problem? He said, I failed my exams. So I said, uh, what's your problem? He looked at me weirdly, as if, as if I had a loose nut. He said, well, I just told you, I failed my exams. I said, yes, I heard you the first time, but you still haven't answered my question. What's your problem? <laughs> he said, you think failing an exam is not a problem? I said, hello, you're talking to somebody who has been a master of failing school exams. <laughs> Young man, if you're trying to impress me, you are not, <laughs> it's not working. For him, that was the end of life. And we had to do a lot of work to get him back. To cut the story short, my son went on to graduate with honors from Waterloo, one of Canada's top universities. <laughs> you need to have the bravado to challenge the odds that life throws against you. Okay, let's do a show of hands here. How many of you use Facebook? <laughs> wow, I am really in, in the wrong business. <laughs> Twitter, Google, I suppose everybody. How many of you know Aramex, Fadi Randur? Well, if you look at the background of all these people, they're just ordinary people like you and me. I hope Fadi Randur doesn't mind me calling him ordinary. I'll send him another packet of uh, Yemeni almonds. He loves Yemeni almonds. If you look at all these guys, they're just ordinary people. 
who had the good days, bad days, successes, failure, uh, setbacks, everything. Where they differed is in the fear department. That's where they differed. They did not allow the possibility of failure to stop them from trying again and again and again. We have seen Jackie Rowling 12 times. That's the key. That's the key right there. See, as long as you are still trying, as long as you're still in the game, the game hasn't ended. You're still working on it. You haven't failed. You fail when you throw in the towel, when you give up. And then you are the one who have announced that failure. Nobody else has done it. You are the one who announced the failure yourself. In the mid-1970s, when I was in my 20s, and it's kind of difficult to believe I was ever in my 20s, <laughs> but yeah, that did happen sometimes in the last century. I was in Abu Dhabi trying to build my life. I had to sleep in the beach, not because I love beaches, but because I was thrown out of my home by the landlord. We were eight guys of us staying in one room. One day the landlord came and threw us out. He found another tenant who paid him more. So what do I, what do, I do? Well, you've got to do what you have to do. I went to sleep in the beach. As I was sleeping, and, and in fact, my, my morning shower was in the mosque nearby, which helped me kind of, you know, discover God. But there's a different story. It took many years to happen. At that time, I was about 21, 22, looking at myself. I was looking at a failure. I mean, how do you actually build your life when you have no roof in an expensive city like Abu Dhabi at the age of 20, 22? Many years later, it occurred to me that what I was looking at is not failure. I was looking at the building blocks of character that will make you one day appreciate, strive, and if ever you succeed, realize that you've succeeded. After all, uh, the poison that doesn't kill you makes you strong. I have a friend. He, he had another friend where they became business associates together. And uh, they decided to go into expanding the business, going into European expansion. My friend was responsible for that. While my friend was busy with the European expansion, he was hit by the news that his friend has committed a massive financial fraud and ran away. And we're talking massive here, we're talking mega dollars, because the business was dealing with that kind of, those kind of sums. My friend was investigated, suspected, but anyway, at the end of the story, although the investigations proved that my friend was innocent, and in fact he was a victim, it destroyed his life in the country where he lived, and he had to live. In the other country where he went, maybe about two or three months later, he was hit by another crisis in, that hit him in a very, very personal way. Something that only his wife and me know. Nobody else knows, not even his family. You would say that by that time he should be finished. He's done. Two major crises in your life, almost instantly. But he managed to stand up again. He managed to rise again. Right now he's facing another crisis, another major disappointment. But I look at his face and I see a defiant man. I see a man who refuses to give up. I see a man who's still trying to build up his life. He reminds me of a story, and this is where I want to end this. My time is almost done. Of a man who enters into a fight, one of those ancient fights, there were no rings at the time, they used to fight in the open, and he gets beaten up on his face. He falls on his, flat on, his, on the ground. He rises up again and he's hit again. Every time he rises up, he's hit again. About third, fourth time he's down on the ground, trying to raise up. He thinks in his head, if I'm able to stand up again, it's because I refused to stay down. And if I do stand up and I'm hit again and I'm never able to rise up, at least it will happen while I was fighting. At least it will happen while I was on my feet. The Chinese have a saying, and I want to say this to myself, to you guys, to Yaman. The Chinese say, failure is not falling down. Failure is refusing to get up.
Thank you very much.